let's look at seven steps in action research. Now there were multiple steps. We said that there were those four core ones there. Let's just look at this as seven steps to follow to make sure that we've created a great action research project. The very first thing we asked you to do uh, when we met you was to come up with a problem or identify things. What do you want to know, right? And identify something that you would like to conduct your action research on. So what is it that you would like to improve or understand uh, a little bit better to be able to be a better teacher? The second step we had in our process was to connect what you wanted to know to a research question. In this sense, we've incorporated here this onion level which was basically saying, also think about your philosophical approach to this whole thing. What theoretical frameworks are you using to approach this? This is important mainly because we want you to have a balance of thinking. So as you were doing your literature reviews, we really wanted to push you to think about finding things that maybe disagree with what you think is true, mainly because these different theoretical frameworks, the different approaches will expand the way that you can now understand that problem, right? And so this is a very important step it's one that takes a lot more time and that oftentimes in action research design in teaching in classroom settings we don't spend enough time doing it but we throw this in as another step that we hope that you're able to take though we are not doing it um, actively within this classroom structure okay so then you come up with your research question and after you've reviewed the literature we want you to revisit that question okay Think about how your question might be changed by some of the new things that you've learned through the literature. And to rethink that research question, has your question changed now? Has it been modified by the new information that you now have? And again, reframe it in that structure. If possible, you know, how and to what extent does X influence or change Y? Because isolating those variables gets more and more important the more information we have. Classroom settings are incredibly messy and the reason that research is so difficult to conduct is that it's very, very difficult to pinpoint what is actually influencing what else. So in order to do this clearly and cleanly, we really want to force you into this research structure if possible, this questioning structure. The fourth step has a couple of different stages. The main idea here is that before you collect your data, before you launch out there and just apply the tool, think about your plan. What is it you're going to do? How are you going to approach this? Who is going to be involved? What's the timing of it? The main idea is that uh, the data collection process of the stage is, is pretty much the most complicated, but if you have a good plan, uh, it works out really easily. So this is the big idea is let's take a step. Let's think about this. I'm going to do a pretest and I'm going to do a post test and that's going to be my data, data gathering, or I'm going to uh, collect journal entries digitally throughout the semester and then I'm going to compare the growth in their writing as far as number of words or new vocabulary, whatever it is. Make a plan about how you're going to do it and when you're going to do it and that will save you a lot of problems in the long run. The good news is that uh, classrooms are data rich environments. Um, the bad news is that we really have to take this time to purposely and conscientiously identify how we are going to be collecting that data. Um, but the good news again is that once you've got that plan, it's really easy to follow. So hopefully we'll take the time to do that planning when we're together in class, okay? Another thing to take into consideration is sort of looking at that uh, research onion model, but looking at it in more graphic form here, is take into consideration as you create that plan, other things, uh, the theoretical frameworks that you have in mind, ethical considerations, what your topic is, the nature of your topic, and how that might lend itself to a specific tool. But more than anything, be very practical in the sense of how much time you actually have to gather that data. If you have access to those data sources that you're looking for, if you're depending on other people to be able to collect that data or not. So make sure that those things are all taken into consideration as you choose your tools. So the, once you've chosen the methodology, once you're clear on the data tools that you're going to be using and you've implemented the plan, make sure that you're thinking about the data collection at least on two different levels. All great data collection has at least two things in common. First, uh, the data is, is valid. That means that the information that you think is represented by what you've collected is so, right? And that it's reliable, uh, meaning the researchers are confident about the accuracy of their data, meaning it can be replicated by other researchers. So validity, for example, you may have a huge mistake when a researcher might presume that they have shown that mathematical reasoning in students has increased because test scores on a specific test increased. Well, that's not exactly true. There's a lot of interpretation there, right? Or uh, you might presume that since you increased 
uh, total number of school days from 180 a year to 200 that students are learning more. Well, the truth of the matter, they're just going to school more. It doesn't mean that they're learning more, right? So you can't use one type of data to um, come to conclusions that don't bear the weight of that data, okay? And in terms of reliability, this basically means that anybody could take your research protocol and if they followed it, they'd get the same results. So the idea of reliability means that what you are putting forth is something that could be replicated by other researchers, okay? So all of this hinges on the right tool. Choosing the right tool to measure and to gather the data that will give us the evidence that we are able to respond to the research question that we've planted in the first place. The fifth step then, once we've gathered all that data, what we have to do is now take that big collection of information and organize it, analyze it, interpret it. And this is probably the greatest stage of research because it's the point where you stop reporting what you found from other people. And now this is really a lot higher order thinking. And it's one thing to report children's test scores appeared to go up and students reported they liked the intervention. Well, that's reporting and that's nice and that's good information. But the why uh, their test scores went up and why did they enjoy that particular type of teaching activity or learning activity more, that is higher order thinking. So remember to go back to Bloom and Bloom's taxonomy and remember these different levels here. Reporting, just understanding, is, is a very base level, right? But to get to this level where you can analyze and interpret and explain the why behind the findings is a much, much higher level of thinking. And that's really the beauty of most of the research is to get to that why. That also means taking not only the data that you've gathered, but combining that with a, a review of the literature that you did beforehand and looking what past people have also found in similar contexts, combine that with your now your own data, and now what is your vision on your problem. So the key idea here is once you've resolved or identified or analyzed the information, now you can actually grow that problem to a different level. It becomes something different now that you have this new interpretation of the information. So the penultimate step is reporting your results. So once you've got all this great information, you've got the whys behind all this information, it's not only important to you, it's great that you know the information, but sharing it with others is huge. So come up with a plan about how you're going to be sharing these results and how you're going to be intellectually generous, how you may be saving somebody else from similar problems in the future because you can explain to them within maybe the Kamehameha context seems to be true for 10th and 11th graders. This is what I found with my data. Hope you can try to replicate it as well. It'd be great because it may change certain policies about the way we interact with our kids, for example. Okay, so you're asked in this course to prepare a way to share your results. It can either be a video recording or it can be a paper, but what we want to do is to share and give back to the community because this is another step in your own thinking process. You had an idea, you had a problem. You're gonna take the time to do research on it. You're going to do an intervention. You're going to have data and you're going to come to now a new understanding of that particular problem. And once you put that out to the world, it again will change uh, people's feedback, the way they see it. They might find other types of um, whys or analysis that maybe you didn't see. This will add to your growing understanding of your particular topic. Okay. And the last step is to take action. Now that we've had that entire feedback loop, now that we've had this problem, this intervention, we have our, our findings, we understand the information better, we've shared it with the outside world, we have a new vision now, now what do we do? This is basically backward design thinking, right? Go back to the original objective of your work. What was it that you wanted to know? Now look at the tools that you used to gather data and how did you evaluate and answer your research question? And now, now that you have all of this information, where does that take you? How do you do something different or new within your own class structure? Do you want to recommend a different kind of a policy? Will you just change your interaction with the students? Do you want to recommend that everybody uh, teaches science by going out to the fish pond? I don't know. There's maybe a hundred different uh, things that will come out of this. But the idea is to now take action. The key idea of action research is that you act upon information that you have interpreted and now you're going to do something even better the next time. That's a beautiful scientific background in this art uh, of teaching. We continually do action research on a daily basis in our heads. The big idea is to now share it with the rest of the world and maybe carry it to that next level of thinking.